siya makalanda. And our case is about diabetes mellitus complicating pregnancy. Before I will start with the discussion, let me define first what is diabetes. Diabetes is a systemic illness because excess glucose can have dire consequences. If the body starved for glucose, it will begin to break down its own tissues for food, producing toxic ketones that can lead to coma or death. There are two main types of diabetes mellitus. They are the type 1 diabetes and the type 2 diabetes. In, the, in type 1 diabetes mellitus, there is a reduced insulin production. The beta cells are gradually destroyed and an increased peripheral resistance in the uptake of insulin. While in the type 2 diabetes, the body produces enough insulin. However, the cell develops a condition called insulin resistance where glucose does not move into the cells. According to Mr. Mark B. Landon, Patrick M. Catalano, and Stephen J. Gabe, pregnancy has been characterized as a diabetogenic state because of increased postprandial glucose le levels in late gestational. In women of GDM, the hormonal milieu of pregnancy may represent an unmasking of a susceptibility to the development of type 2 diabetes mellitus. According to the Pedersen hypothesis, maternal hyperglycemia results to fetal hyperglycemia and hyperinsulinemia which results in excessive fetal growth and perinatal morbidities. Type maternal glycemic control is associated with a reduced risk for fetal macrosomia. Diabetes in pregnancy is associated with an increase in perinatal morbidity, including congenital malformation, macrosomia, hypoglycemia, hypocalcemia, hyperbilirubinia, and also polycystemia, and a transient form of cardiomyopathy. Let me discuss to you the congenital malformation. It occurs with a two-fold to six-fold increased rate of offspring of women with progestational diabetes compared with that of the normal population. Maternal hyperglycemia has been proposed of the primary teratogenic factor. We also have fetal macrosomia. It has been defined as birth weight than 4,000 to 4,500 grams as well as meeting the criteria for large for gestational age in which birth weight is above the 90th percentile for population and sex-specific growth curves. Infants and mother with GDM or the, gas, uh, of, or the gestational diabetes mellitus have an increase in fat mass. Compared with fat-free mass, the growth is disproportionate with chest-to-head and shoulder-to-head ratios larger than those infants of women with normal glucose tolerance. The next one is the hypoglycemia or the neonatal, it, also, it is also known as the neonatal hypoglycemia. It is a blood glucose level less than 35 to 40, to 40 mg per deciliter during the first 12 hours of life, result from a rapid drop in plasma glucose concentration following clumping of the umbilical cord. Hypoglycemia is a byproduct of hyperinsulinemia, is particularly common in mac macrosomic newborns, in whom rates exceed 50%. And lastly, the respiratory distress syndrome. Several studies that in women with well-controlled diabetes, whose fetus is delivered at 38 to 39 um, weeks gestation, the risk of respiratory distress syndrome is no higher than the then that observed in classification and risk assessment, Priscilla White first noted that the patient age at onset of diabetes, the duration of the disease, and the presence of vasculopathy significantly influence 
perinatal outcome, her classification system has been widely applied to pregnant women with diabetes. Class A1 diabetes mellitus includes those women have demonstrated carbohydrate intolerance during an oral glucose tolerance test. However, their fasting and postprandial glucose are maintained within range by dietary regulation alone. Class A2 includes women with gestational diabetes mellitus who require medical management. Diabetes first identified in early pregnancy most likely represent cases of overt diabetes. Nephropathy. Overt diabetes nephropathy is diagnosed in women with type 1 and type 2 diabetes mellitus when persistent proteinuria exists in the absence of infection or other urinary tract disease. Class F describes pregnant women with underlying renal disease. This includes those with reduced creatinine clearance or proteinuria of at least 500 mg in 24 hours measured during first 20 weeks of gestation. Control hypertension in pregnant women with diabetic nephropathy is crucial to prevent further deterioration of kidney function and optimize pregnant out pregnancy outcome. Some have recommended instituting antihypertensive therapy to maintain blood pressure less than 135 over 85 millimeter mercury in pregnant women nephropathy. Retinopathy. Class R diabetes designates women with proliferative retinopathy, which represent neovasculation of growth of new retinal capillaries. These vessels may cause vitreous hemorrhage with scarring and retinal detachment, which result in vision loss. Coronary artery disease. Class H diabetes refers to the presence of diabetes of any duration associated with ischemic myocardial disease. Next is early screening for overt disease and detection of gestational diabetes mellitus. The frequency of diabetes complicating pregnancy has been estimated to be as high as 6 to 7 percent with approximately 90 percent of these cases representing women with gestational diabetes mellitus. A plasma value Good day, my name is Moko Emanuela Isenwa. I'm here to talk on the treatment, complication of gestational diabetes and then conclusion of this case study. What is the treatment for gestational diabetes? We have oral hypoglycemia. What is the treatment for that? How do we go about that? Example is met for me. So, patients with diabetes in pregnancy is always given oral hypoglycemic, hypoglycemic drug. Simply means drug, blood reducing drug, blood sugar reducing drug. So, these patients are given oral hypoglycemic alongside with insulin. It can be given two to three times in a day. I mean insulin. It can also be given as patient con continuous IV infusion. I mean insulin. Then oral hypoglycemic is taken in the morning and in the evening. As insulin being part of this treatment for diabetes in pregnancy simply also involve the use of glucometer to check the blood sugar level you do that in the morning to check the fasting blood sugar level which is expected to be 95 milligram per day for a pregnant woman and 140 milligram per day that is random blood sugar which can be checked in the night and that is why you administer this oral hypoglycemic two times in a day if the fasting blood sugar level in the morning was high and in the night was also high but if it is really normal or low you don't have to give and it's alternatively given with insulin either in continuous iv or two to three times in a day so let's move over to the complications of this disease what are the complications? 
being a nurse and being exposed to different cases like that i can easily detect the complications then the complications include we have to section it to the maternal and fetal complication and let's start with the mother because the mother is our main concern today though we have the baby at hand we have it at heart to take care of the baby but since the baby is still in situ we have to consider the mother the complications of this dm can be in in the maternal side can be delivery period during delivery it may be very difficult to deliver these babies because most babies delivered of a pregnant woman with diabetes are always macrosomic meaning they are always large so delivering this baby will be very serious problem it may even require the use of cs that is operation cesarean section or vacuum evacuator or giving episiotomy that is incising the perineum the perineum that is between the anus and the vagina just to make enough space for the head of this baby to be able to pass through that is for maternal so it will be a very serious problem during delivery then for the fita a fita is going to look large and um, i've said it before that is a uh, high weight babies then they are always exposed to future type 2 diabetes mellitus and they can be hypoglycemic yeah they can be hypoglycemic because when they are hypoglycemic when they are delivered immediately after delivery that is neonatal neonat neonates yeah their sugar level is always checked for these mothers and it will appear to be low because the supply to the baby has been cut off through the cord that is umbilical cord that supplies those sugar that makes it always high has been cut off so the baby will go into drastic hypoglycemia which will require the doctors to place this baby in iv fluid or glucose in order to meet up with his glucose requirements that is the complication for the pizza so as for pregnant woman that is that that has diabetes mellitus you have different functions to do which is eat healthily yeah vegetables and proteins low carb and low fat then exercise frequently yeah maintain your oral hypoglycemic drugs and insulin injection be compliant report to your doctor whenever you have any problems relating to your health and whenever there is fetal distress yeah there is always maternal and fetal distress as one of the complications in diabetes in pregnancy so if you have such issue you have to report to the hospital immediately to avoid stillbirth babies and miscarriages that is all the complications so let's move over to the conclusion this gestational diabetes which is diabetes in pregnancy affects 10 percent of women in america and the race that is mostly affected is african americans hispanic asians and alaska it affects races like that and how can it what are the causes the causes are high blood pressure high cholesterol level polycystic ovarian syndrome family history of diabetes race age older than 25 years and the rest of them these are the causes and also the risk factor so you know pregnancy in, in our normal body processes as a pre as in like no repairing like somebody that is not pregnant yet our normal body process is different from that of a pregnant woman the pregnant woman the ovary seems to mask the blood sugar level it produces something that looks like glucose that masks the blood sugar level and by so doing the blood sugar level 
seems to be high that is why some pregnant women have high blood glucose level but can be maintained and can be cured because whenever the woman delivers this diabetes will be nowhere showing that it's not is not directly diabetes that he, she is she has been living with is just because of pregnancy so that is why we advise women with such conditions to always visit their doctors that is at natal care to be sure that they are free before the day of delivery with other complications so let's move over to the let's move over to the classification of this gestational diabetes we have class one and two classification one is ones that can be controlled with diet two is the one that can be controlled with insulin showing that diabetes mellitus that is not persistent can be controlled with diet and exercises the other is insulin and oral hypoglycemia that is eating too much is the one that can be controlled with diet then the symptoms is i feel pee i want to pee always frequently i'm feeling thirsty always and the last but not the least i'm feeling hungry we eat too much all these things are symptoms of diabetes which we may not know until when we visit the hospital and make sure you take back home your blood glucose Mm, measurement instruments that is glucometer and blood pressure apparatus that is all these instruments can be used at home and educated by the nurse on how to use it at home so that you tra trace your diabetes mellitus so every woman out there should make sure that they end up being happy especially when they are pregnant because it's not easy to achieve and they should always feel healthy and be proud of themselves for making it to the last day of delivery i'm still Moko Emanela Isenua. thank you very much for tuning in and listening and watching to this video hope you learned what is gestational diabetes and hope you are going to implement it as a woman when you get pregnant or teach others out there or to your children thank you very much and bye bye